Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with the spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his donkey, ox, from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Lord, the Sabbath set us free by your good news. Help us to hear it and help it to grow in our hearts that we might leave here standing a lot like that woman on that day, standing straight up and praising you. In your name we pray. Amen. I want to take you back to when you were a child. Um, for those of you who maybe who grew up in small towns or maybe big towns too, and you went to church or... Um, well, let me just stop right there. Maybe you, you went to church, maybe you didn't. But um, what did you do on Sunday? What was your routine on Sunday? And it's, it's all right. We can, you, you can share if you want to. <laughs> what did you do? Like, well, what made Sunday different from any other day of the week? Church. Went to church. Okay, good answer. Good job, Wayne. What else? What? Go out to eat. Yeah, we had... We had that, uh, at oh, the round table in Brookhaven. It was right across the street from the, from the Methodist church. So we got a head start on the Baptist as long as they, you know, but get to that round table. Or maybe um, sometimes Nanny would, that's where I learned to appreciate comeback dressing. Does anybody like comeback dressing? Nanny could make some comeback dressing. And we either had chicken spaghetti or brisket or fried chicken. And now you're not going to listen to another word I said because you're going to get high. But anyway, that's... So we'd spend that and we'd eat a lot and, you know, the kids would be in the card table, you know, and the adults would be, you know, at the big table and they'd be saying all this important stuff, you know, and we'd, um, and then, uh, yeah, you'd cut, well, and you'd go back on Sunday nights um, to you know, MIF or, you know, something like that. But uh, what else, how else did you celebrate? Wayne? Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Sunday drive, take a Sunday drive. Yeah. Take a nap. I like that. What else? Who else? So you couldn't go play games with Wayne? Oh, you couldn't do the Wayne? Okay. We were a little bit more liberal, you know, in the, in the interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a wider path along the yeah. You visited the sick, okay? I think what I was raised was it was important what we didn't do. And that we did not work. You did not work. Really important us. Did not work. So like you might have remembered like driving by and seeing somebody in the neighborhood who was cutting the lawn. You'd say that lost soul is doomed if we don't <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What you couldn't do. Which which in turn let's you know the text. Yeah, there's a, there's a miracle that takes place and we want to notice the da this daughter of, Z of, of Abraham that Jesus heals, but she doesn't ask for it. He calls her forward and Jesus doesn't say, I heal you in the name of God. He says, I set you free. Right? And so there's, there's part of the opportunity of Sabbath and then there's part of like what you maybe can't do. What camp do you think Jesus seemed to lean a little bit more in? 
I'm not saying Jesus was a Methodist, but doggone it. He, he had a little bit wider view of, of what Sabbath meant. There he is in the temple, much like today, on their sacred hour. And he was teaching. And a woman who had been bent over for 18 years, probably nobody else saw her because she was like that, right? She's in a crowd. But Jesus sees her and he calls her up and he lays hands on her. He touches her, shoulder, head, whatever. He heals her and says, you are set free from your ailment. And she immediately gets up, straightens her back. She lifts her hands and prays. She sings the doxology. That's kind of the way I see it. Praise God from whom all. And boy, there's always one in the bunch. You people. No, the, the, the leader, the clergy that day, he must have been uptight or something. But he was like, look, it's, we're, we're open six days a week for healing. One day a week. You can wait, right? And Jesus is like, no, 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 no. This woman has waited 18 years for her liberation. She will be liberated because that is what the Sabbath is all about. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy is found in not one but two places in our Bible. There are two places where the Ten Commandments, or as our Jewish friends call them, the Ten Words or the Ten Gifts. One is in Exodus 20. It says in Exodus 20, Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, for in six days the Lord labored and worked, and the seventh day He rested. But it says something different in Deuteronomy 5. Observe the Sabbath and keep it holy. For remember that one time you were slaves in Egypt. You didn't get a day off. You get a gift. You get to rest and enjoy it. You see, in Genesis chapter 1, in the day of creation, the seventh day is the absolute pinnacle of it all. For what good would the mountains and the fish and the eagles and the ocean and the lakes be if God didn't give it to us to enjoy. One day to slow down and to give thanks to God for the relationships and the people that we have. Y'all, that is the heart and soul of why we worship and meet every week. Do not neglect, it says in the New Testament, to meet and to gather yeah, I love it when I'm rolling on a sermon, but I know it's not a 10 every week. And maybe you don't love every hymn that we sing, but each and every week we see each other. And each and every week, every one of us, in some way, it may not be physical, but I bet it's, it, it's spiritual. Every one of us in some way walks in all bent out of shape with the burden that we know that we cannot carry alone. And we're here gathered to remember that we're all fighting battles that we can't fight alone. But the point of worship is that Jesus continues to encroach upon our worship and to see us in the sea of, in the sea of crowd. Maybe we think we're anonymous, but every week as we gather, I'm reminded that Jesus calls our name and says, you know, you can be set free from all this worry and stuff. Do any of you sometimes on Monday through Friday or Saturday overdo it and get lost in your busyness? <laughs> Let me ask it another way. Do any of you not get lost in your busyness? The worries of the world call us to go faster and faster and faster. And the faster you go, the more God's good creation becomes a blur. Even worse, the more the people in your life become a blur and not the people they've been called to be. People begin to look anonymous to me when I get in a hurry. I don't have time. I've got my agenda. But every single Sabbath for me, God reminds me that my agenda may not be the most important thing on the face of the earth. That I'm part of a family, of a community of people that are drawn together. And it's like, you know, you've got something on your phone, like my kids are like, oh, dad, you know, check this out. You know, like it's almost like inherently human to want other people to enjoy what you're enjoying. Well, maybe that's one way that we've been created in the image of God, that God longs for us to enjoy what, what, what we've been, and, and doesn't want us to be so busy that we spend this very short life we've been given in a blur, in a blur. We drop Trip off to school. And one of the things I told him is what I know you were told when you were dropped off at school and what you told your kids. Trip, make sure you get some rest, right? 
Because I remember when I was a student, I just thought I never had, you know, never had to go to sleep. Everything all right? Sunday night we call them. You doing all right? Yes, yeah, yeah, we're doing good. You're going to get to class. What time is your first class trip? 8 o'clock. He said, don't worry. I set my alarm at 7.50. I'm going to be fine. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. Oh, nobody, everybody just jumps out of bed, you know. <laughs> you know. The Sabbath is a gift. It's like God saying, would you please slow down and enjoy what I've given you? Would you please slow down and enjoy the people that I've put in your life? Now, our Sabbath is a little different than the Jewish Sabbath. When does the Jewish Sabbath start? When did Beth Israel? Sundown, Friday, that's right. And um, um, for, for Jews today who observe it, that still is, is like their time. Um, for us, our Sabbath, the, 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 the Sabbath for us is has to do with that picture right there. Every Sunday is a little Easter. Every Sunday is a resurrection day for us. No matter how bent over my back is on Sunday, I remember that God has given me a power that can overcome and set me free from anything that attempts to grab me. And y'all, that's good news. Because there's a lot of stuff that's trying to grab you. And you know what the worst oppressor of our Sabbath is? I'm not worried about the fact that there are no more blue laws or that, you know, I don't want to blame society. I am my worst oppressor. I'm my worst oppressor. Because I think for some reason that I've got to keep overdoing it and overdoing it to the point where I cease to be a human being and I think I'm a human doing. And that's toxic and it's dangerous. But every week, God says, slow down. There was an American, a very wealthy American who traveled all the way to Kenya to hunt, safari hunt. And he goes and he had all his stuff. He had a big trunk. This was 70, 80 years ago. He had a big trunk. He had his map. He had all of his essentials, which, which is a mountain of essentials. And he goes, and so they go. Um, there are some porters there that will help carry his luggage there. And, and, they, and they, they get up early in the morning and they go uh, fast and furious into the jungle. And then they get up the next morning and go even deeper. Third day, even deeper. The fourth day, the fourth day, all the porters were sitting beside a tree. And it was like 9 o'clock in the morning. And that American tourist was like, let's get on with it. What's going on? He gets real frustrated. And the translator, he said, why are they just sitting around? It's time to go. And the translator said... They're sitting beside the tree today so that their souls can catch up to their bodies. And my goodness, how many times do we miss the opportunity to sit by the tree and be reminded that before there's any title by your name, you are a human being, a daughter and son of Zion, and you've been created in God's very image. What good is it to be busy all your life if you forget what you're living for. But every Sunday, God says, I'll remind you. I'll pick you up out of a crowd and you can be set free from whatever is weighing you down. At Beth Israel, they start their Sabbath the same way we start our Christian Sabbath. They come in and they light these candles. And when they light these candles, a whole new creation comes to light. And so we too, with our two awesome acolytes today, we light the candles. But did you notice how slowly they had to come to the candles to keep it lit? God is calling us to slow down, to see Sabbath as a gift. And what good is my life if I am toiling it away? God says, not much. But on this Sunday, God says, Jesus says, let's start over and try again. Eternity starts now. The new creation starts today. Find your tree. It's important. It will save your life. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for settling us down. Thank you for giving us a place, just like the place that Jesus entered on that day, where we can simply be 
celebrate and love one another. Set us free to celebrate Sabbath and may our Sabbath spill over all over all week long until we meet again. These things we ask in the name of the Lord of Sabbath, Jesus Christ. Amen.